Welcome to Paul Allison's uh, video cast. Um, it's October 21st, Saturday, October 21st, 2006. And I'm running over here on the Palisades on the other side of New York, over here in New Jersey across the Hudson River. The Palisades which Thomas Merton um, rhapsodized about. I mean correctly. Really beautiful area. It's right across the bridge uh, from my house. So I love running over here. And as you can tell the leaves are changing. Uh, having a good time here. Uh, given that we're in the last part of October, um, we're kind of in reflective mode at school. At least I want to call it that. Um, it's the uh, Students' first assessment report cards are coming out this week. Uh, we meet with parents on Thursday and Friday. And uh, of course, report cards are due. And my grades are due on Monday morning. So one of the questions I thought I'd talk about here is how I assess blogs. How do you grade a class that is uh, centered on web blogs. I think in my last video run cast, um, I talked kind of abstractly about accountability issues and setting up communities. Well, I finally have finished all of that. I figured out all the RSS feed back story. Uh, too much to explain there. It gets very technical, but. I uh, know now why some of the RSS feeds were not working for some of my students, and I'm able to fix it. So, anyway, listening to this, if you're working in an elk and uh, <laughs> you want to know what happens when you change usernames, I know how to fix it all. Big deal. Um, all three of you who are doing that can email me at allisonpr at gmail.com. <laughs> But seriously, uh, I've been able to set up communities, and that's really um, the exciting part. And I will put out uh, on the front of youthvoices.net, I will put links to the four communities that I've set up. I've set up one for my advisory group. I actually had, had done that many weeks ago. Um, I finally followed up with my new journalism classes, my ninth grade, my 10th grade, and my 11th and 12th grade. Um, each of those now have their own classes set up, and you can click a link when you go to the community that represents that class and see an aggregator that collects just the blogs from that class. Now, that's kind of the, uh, pioneer work on this this particular elk. I needed to get this set up and wanted to get it set up properly so that other people could do it as well. Susan Entenheim has a community set up for her students as well and uh, I think Richard Stolman has one set up. So I'll put links to all of these in a little box or a section of the home page of uh, youthvoices.net so that you can browse the uh, ELG by uh, classes as well as the other ways that are possible to to look through the the ELG. Um, so I'm excited about that and it certainly facilitates the other big project that I've got to get to this weekend which is getting my grades together. 
Um, and that's the question I'd like to um, talk the most about here on this video podcast. And uh, then I want to end with a, a story um, that I think has to do with literacy and uh, the way kids are using language these days. Uh, maybe it's about technology too, but not really. <laughs> there, you'll see. And uh, so, first, the question how do you assess blocks? You know, I uh, I hate grading. I gotta say, I uh, I think it's arbitrary and doesn't help much. And I teach an elective course that isn't really necessary for school. And I've been to too many meetings where parents turn to a troubled child and say, "I don't care what you get in technology class. I just want you to do better in your humanities class, your history class, your English class, your oh, whatever, your science or math class." Those core subjects are what matter. And, you know, I've learned over the years not to fight that. To just kind of go along with it and not not make grading central in any way to my work. Um, Now, adding to this picture is my background of having taught for a dozen years in a school where we didn't give grades, not evaluative grades at least. Instead, we um, gave credit according to, um, uh, well, really it was uh, the completion of work. Um, And uh, so you completed a certain set of assignments and you got a certain number of points. Those points eventually added up to credit. Uh, I think of that now because that's the scheme that I've come up with this year. I'm uh, trying not to blow off the grading process, trying to treat it seriously and uh, give credit where it's deserved and uh, be clear with students where it's not deserved, what they need to do to, uh, to improve in their work. But how do you do it? How do you assess six weeks of of blogging. Well, my first answer is that there are two parts of this that they've been working on. Each week I introduced a little section of their profile that they were supposed to write. We started with um, 50 likes and 50 dislikes. So in evaluating their uh, their profiles, I decided what I'd do is give points to each of the sections of the profile that they should have filled in by now, and there are ten. So I'll give five points for each, which will lead to the possibility of getting um, 50 points. And it allows me some small assessment, one to five, for each of the boxes. So the 50 likes. Um, are there 50 and and so forth. So uh, let me just uh, quickly go over those 10 things that should be on the profile. It's the 50 likes, 50 dislikes. Then there's the who am I piece of writing. And that needs to be grammatically and spelling needs to be correct on that. Needs to be in third person, needs to be three paragraphs or more. Um, So that'll be a good one to evaluate. Next, there's a uh, a link on the profile to a bigger project, but this is my way of giving credit for that project. That link goes to a marker, which is on the community walks map, and uh, and so that link should be in the brief description box. Following all of that, um, there are there's a box for their ten favorite authors. 10 favorite books, um, 10 things they would like to do, uh, their career goals they want to be when they grow up, and uh, 10 main skills that they have. So, lots of numbers, 
Uh, but I do think that this kind of, um, I don't know what to say, call it really, um, the quantitative, really, this quantitative look at the profile will give us a real sense of whether or not the student has given effort and thought to presenting themselves on this first page. Now most of those boxes end up being links to other students, other people in the in the ELG, and ways to connect to other people. So that when you put a like uh, running, for example, is something you like to do. Um, and there's somebody else who's put running, or or even if they've tagged, used the word running in one of the tags later, that hooks up with your profile. It's a way for you to get known and uh, and get to know people in the in the elk. So that's the first way. Um, students can earn 50 points. They're aiming to get up to 100 points. Uh, and they can earn up to half of those by having a good profile created uh, in the blog. Okay, now, um, when I want uh, to go on to the next piece here. Uh, what's going to be more fun to evaluate a little harder, perhaps, by the blog posts themselves. And before I get into the quantitative ways I figured out to to grade this, let me just say that what I'm looking for overall is that I can turn to a student and say, um, "Okay, now you've written five, six, seven posts over the past five weeks. What are you mainly writing about?" What is your topic? What what do you want to be the expert in? Where's your niche? Um, what's your community? Those kinds of questions. And uh, if you haven't done the writing, if you haven't taken it seriously, then of course you can't answer that. But I think many students can, and that's kind of exciting. Um, so I'm looking for Overall, I'm looking for that sense of momentum and care and uh, um, ability to identify a theme that you're writing about in your blog, your personal blog. <laughs> 